we're not standing still. Right. And you never have. You never have. You've, you've always been out there. And I do have to say before we go on, though, Artemis, thank you for your service, really. I would have to say also that I watched Street Survivors, the true story of the Leonard Skinner plane crash again. I'm still s- so moved by it. And the sadness I feel is nothing compared to what all of you have felt throughout the decades. But how happy were you once that film was finally released and you were able to get that information out there to us? Well, thank you for that question, Kiki. Uh, I mean, it was cathartic. Um, and we worked really hard on the soundtrack and the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Hollywood kind of went overboard on the nudity a little bit. Uh, you know, but but that's Hollywood. Uh, but there was nudity. You know, a lot of people streaking the stage right. and, and and girls flashing us, which I, I have to say, nobody in the band minded uh, that very much. Uh, but you know, my Marine Corps training did um, help me get to a farmhouse and bring help back to the crash site and uh, spend forty six years. This last October twentieth. It was uh, 40, 46 years, and we were actually on stage at the Grand Ole Opry, and um, you know it was it was such a feeling of thinking about all my friends up in rock and roll heaven, you know, thinking, well, you know, uh, we're here, we're representing, we get to play a couple of songs, the place is sold out, you know, uh, Vince Gill, uh, Vince Gill actually dedicated a song. To uh, to us uh, because it was the twenty you know the forty uh, sixth anniversary on the twentieth and we had just come in from San Antonio Texas raising money for the veterans and um, so it, it's it's very uh, you, you know um, cathartic to get that that movie out there. Um, my son Marshall wrote a song called uh, Southern Feelings. And in the in the song, it says, uh, "Live each day like it could be the last day of your life," mm-hmm. and it was very poignant because um, in the movie we're getting on the uh, plane for the last time. Um, we crashed that plane; it never landed. Um, and Marshall's song was playing. Uh, it's a beautiful song, and and it got a lot of airplay. But when you release a movie during pandemic and you release a soundtrack, you know, you kind of get, you kind of get, um, passed over a little bit because the whole world was suffering. So I'm not going to complain about not enough, uh, airtime, but we're very proud of the movie and, uh, it felt good to get it done because against all odds, you know, we, we got that movie made and, um, to tell the story because you know i i felt like leonard skinner's fans were not getting any younger and i think they had a, a right to know the truth about what the band went through that fateful day and that fateful uh evening and um er- everything in the movie is is true um you know we had to use a different kind of airplane because we couldn't really afford on our budget to get the the same kind of plane, those those planes are expensive, and so we had to use a, a C one seventeen tail dragger. Um, I flew in those planes. Uh, we we called them Goonie Birds, and uh, they had a very safe flying record. So we used um, the the uh, C one seventeen in the movie, but it's got a good looking cockpit. Um, it's got it's a twin engine. It's got a good sound. So. That's the only thing that wasn't, you know, the way it was because we had a tricycle landing gear um, um, con- conveyor, which the tail set up in the air and uh, one one wheel uh, on the nose. So that was the only difference in the movie that wasn't correct. And, you know, a lot of people might say, well, this wasn't the same and that wasn't the same, but... We did the best we could right. under the circumstances, being sued by a bunch of blood-sucking weasels out of New York City, and uh, a, you know, a million eight hundred thousand budget. We did the best we we could. So, 
Thank you for bringing it up and allowing me to say that.